here likes to eat? Or cook? Or watch celebrity chefs on TV? Or keep your hand up if you'd go as far as to call yourself a foodie? A lot of us, right? Food is something we celebrate in American culture, in every culture. It provides the energy and the materials that we need to think and grow and move and be. And beyond a personal level, our choices and agricultural practices set the course for a collective future in terms of how we produce food and its impact on the environment. Here's the thing, though. If we really are what we eat, then most Americans seem to be having an identity crisis. Or what I mean is the vast majority of us, by far, remain misinformed, disengaged, or simply confused about food. Last year, Michigan State University launched the Food Literacy and Engagement Poll through Food at MSU, which is a campus-wide initiative to listen to consumers, foster dialogue, and help everyone make more informed choices about what we eat. We surveyed more than 2,000 Americans aged 18 and over, waited to reflect the US Census data, and we asked them questions about their attitudes related to a variety of food topics, from trust in experts to labels, to, well, you name it, anything having to do with food. And what we learned surprised us. For example, more than a third, 37% of Americans did not know that non-genetically modified foods contain genes. For the record, you might laugh, but, but for the record, all food contains genes. Genes are made up of those little pairs of A's and T's and G's and C's that make up DNA or the building blocks of life, or you might say, life's little instruction manual. And I did hear some giggles. But the truth is, if you look around, we're not exactly representative of the nation as a whole. So the, the big ideas and the kinds of science that we're hearing about today don't always make their way out into the broader public discourse. And on top of that, just like, well, everything else in 2018, when it comes to information about food, we're not turning to experts. So just 52% of Americans say they trust academic scientists when it comes to the health and safety of their food. And if you think that's not so high, 48% say they trust government scientists. And only a third, 33%, say they trust industry scientists. So if we're not getting our information from food experts, you can just shout it out. Where do you think we're learning about food? I'm hearing a lot about social media. I see a few people holding up their iPhones. Yes, well, most Americans are not reading academic journals or peer-reviewed literature, and the truth is, frankly, they couldn't if they tried because we keep a lot of that stuff behind a paywall. But we are on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and Snapchat and WhatsApp and Twitter because that's where we stay connected with our family, our friends, maybe celebrities. And these are the people most of us, well, trust most. And so that is where mom or your cousin or perhaps a Kardashian, or Gwyneth Paltrow, are posting conflicting recommendations about what to buy and what to eat. And on top of that, there's a mountain of misinformation, pseudoscience, fake news, competing for our interest and our clicks. So who remembers reading that coffee might keep your mind sharp, your heart healthy, maybe even stave off cancer. Okay. Now, who remembers reading that coffee 
might raise your blood pressure and therefore your likelihood of having a stroke. Exactly. So those opinions are not mutually exclusive. They're happening all the time, in real time, on and offline. And frankly, it's exhausting. And really, why should we listen to experts when there have been some very obvious shenanigans going on for quite a long time from the industry side in a very public arena? Like a Game of Thrones plot, it's complicated. And the resolution isn't exactly clear from where we stand in 2018. But when it comes to food, it is fair to say that winter is coming. And what I mean is, we are going to have to feed as many people as possible with ever more limited resources on a changing planet. And it won't be easy. By 2050, there will be about 9 billion people living on Earth. And we will have to increase agricultural yield by 70 to 100% in order to meet anticipated global food demand. That means we'll have to change the ways that we produce, harvest, use, and waste food. But I'm hopeful. New innovations are allowing us to grow crops with less fertilizer, produce crops that can survive flooding, or that can provide vital nutrients to at-risk communities in the developing world. However, a lack of public understanding, appreciation, and support for the related research is what will hinder our progress. And at the same time, we are more removed in this country from agriculture than ever before. Less than 2% of Americans currently live on farms as the population shifts away from rural areas into cities and suburbs. Today, 50% of Americans say they rarely or never seek out information about where their food was grown or how it was produced. If we're going to have an impact, we need to foster trust in experts while improving food literacy among policymakers and the public. We must cultivate a culture where more people recognize where our food comes from, as well as our personal and collective food print on the environment. And that means bringing academics out of the ivory towers, producers off the farm, and health professionals into an exchange of civic discourse that quells mistrust and fosters mutual understanding. It means becoming less siloed and more collaborative. And most importantly, it means taking the time to listen and learn from each other. As I said, I'm very hopeful. And I'm hopeful because we're here having these conversations, thinking about the future of food and how we can meet our goals. And I'm hopeful because, look around, we all really do love food. And so we have a vested interest in making good choices. And most of all, I am hopeful because I know that getting there is possible. Thank you. <laughs>